So today we're gonna go ahead and tear down this EMG Lantac PDW um, and see what's inside. And so if you find this video helpful in any way or you have any questions, go ahead and give the video a like or leave a comment below and uh, I'll be monitoring those and answering any questions about the gun. So let's get into it. Um, you know, as we kind of discussed early on, there was a problem immediately with the bucking of the gun. Um, it was causing a huge air leak and it wasn't, you know, feeding the round or shooting the round down the barrel, um, which ended up jamming the gun up as well. Um, so what I did right off the bat was replaced the bucking and inner barrel. So just a heads up there, this is my own case. I haven't seen um, too many guns have too many issues. I have heard some some reported issues of, you know, grips not working and those sorts of things, but nothing major. Um, and a bucking and barrel change is fairly simple. So this is what the accuracy looks like on the land tack out of the box. So have a couple of groups here. So we're getting one inch groups, about 1.3 inch groups, right around there. Um, first group out of the box was 2.1. Um, so that's what you saw with the, the shooting test. Um, <clears throat> Of the seven groups, the average comes out to 1.3 inches. And I shot a control with my G&G &G, um, combat machine. And that has a Prometheus um, pop-up, a Prometheus barrel, 6.03, it's about 240 millimeters um, with a PDIW hold bucking. Um, consistency on the FPS is plus or minus three FPS. Um, and then the hop-up arm is a shaved down Prometheus arm with an M nub on the end. And that's, that's, that's shooting 0.28, um, doing probably, you know, about 240 FPS with, uh, 0.28 roughly. Um, so that's what it looks like out of the box. So pretty decent accuracy from the EMG Lantac. Um, I did put a new bucking in and I did put a new barrel in, so that may contribute to this as well. Uh, the distance shot was about 45 feet indoors using a red dot sight, um, some sandbags for a rest. So not the most accurate sled, but it gives you an idea of kind of what to expect out of this gun. I do know that my GNG combat machine can reach out to 150, 200 feet indoors um, on a man-sized target very easily. So I'd expect the EMG land tack uh, with a new bucking and barrel to, to have, have similar results. Um, I will say this though, the SEMA hop-up unit is a little bit lackluster um so would consider upgrading that right off the bat as well so in terms of immediate upgrades out of the box would definitely recommend um completely new inner barrel and hop-up setup and then uh we'll take a look at the gearbox and see if there's anything else that that needs to be thrown in so i'm gonna go ahead and start taking the upper receiver off the gun. So first things first, we're gonna wanna make sure that the bolt catch isn't caught and the um, dust cover here is closed. Then we'll go ahead and depress the front takedown pin. This might be stuck. I've loosened it up over a couple of tries now. So you might need a tool to punch this through um, but I've loosened it up a little bit, so it's a little easier. It looks like I still need a tool though. So I'm just gonna grab like a flathead and then just push it through. There you go, gets a little stuck. But after that, just go ahead, pull it back. It is self-retained, so no issues there. Um, and then after that, yeah, you just pull it apart. So I'm just gonna grab it with my hand and pull forward. And there you go. 
that comes right off. We'll put the uh, upper receiver to the side and let's go ahead and tear down this lower. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the stock off here. Just pull back on this latch and that'll come right off. To take the buffer tube off, we just need to loosen the castle nut. It was hand tight when I got the gun, so just a heads up there. Just go ahead and back that off. And then if you, I don't know if you guys can see this, but you turn the buffer tube slightly, just like this, and then you just slide it right off. Make sure to pull the Dean's connector through. There you go. And so you'll be able to see inside, let me get the sling plate out of the way. Um, but if you see that here, the buffer tube basically has these notches that line up with the notches on the receiver. And then it just cants to the side a little bit once you get it in there and then it locks into place and then you tighten down the castle nut. But to just take that off, rotate and pull off. So that's gonna reveal your um, quick change spring system. So let me get an Allen key over here. So it's a six millimeter and just gonna slowly take this off. Careful not to launch it at myself. There we go. So there's a little bit of paint shavings that came off and then that reveals your spring. This is one piece, looks like about probably yeah, two piece. I think you might be able to unscrew that, but um, full metal here. And then it does have a ball bearing at the back, which is what I like to see. And then an irregular pitch spring to help with that twanging that you might hear on some G&Gs. Put that over here, that goes over there. All right, so next up, that looks like it's a Torx. You just go in, unscrew that, put that to the side, take the button off, Let's see here, and see if I can pull this button off. Oh, there it goes, just came off. Latch drops out. Put that to the side and then get that spring out of here. For the motor, it's pretty easy access just to press the two tabs, pull back. You might need to jiggle this little piece loose. There you go. That comes off. So that's your motor adjustment right there. And let me get these out of the way. Just pull straight up. There you go. We'll get this wire out of the way. And then we'll just slide the motor out. So let's take a quick look at this. Commutator looks pretty good. I've been running this on an 11.1. Um, don't know if it has a bearing in there or if that's a bushing. I'm not quite sure, cannot see. There's the markings on the motor, obviously made by SEMA. Looks like it's a bushing at the top of the motor and it appears to be a D-type pinion, but I don't see a grub screw locking it in place. And that is what the pinion looks like. Maybe a thousand rounds through this thing so far, nothing major. It does look like there's a notch in the tooth already. The wear is on the bottom edge 
of the teeth. So the wear is on the bottom edge of the teeth. I don't know if you can see that, but right where my fingernail is, there's a bit of wear there. Otherwise, feels very torquey. It looks like it's got neodymium magnets in there wrapped around pretty good as well. So fairly large magnets in there. Cool. That's the motor. And it's driving this thing at like 27, 26 RPS. So that's, that's still pretty good. Um, okay. So let's take a look inside the motor. And so we can see some Phillips head screws in there. Looks like it's in the top right and bottom left position to how I'm positioning the grip. Be very careful not to round off these screws. So just be careful. All right. There we go. And then the grip should just come right off. And then just beware of the motor tabs here. Try not to bend them too much. And I'm gonna keep the motor grip stored vertically so that the screws stay in place. So if you see that, it does look like it has a cutout for the wiring. So that's really good to see. And what that does, it's gonna protect the wires when you're reinserting the motor. It's not gonna get cut up in there. So that's good to see. It looks like there's a bit of wax sealant to make sure that they know if you're tampering with the gearbox. Looks like it's got Phillips head screws on the gearbox as well. All right. It's pretty snug in there, so that's good. And I'm gonna pull this. Looks like the takeout pin actually comes right out. So there is a retaining catch on the inside if you can see that rotating now. So boom, but that retains the takedown pin. And then we got to drive out the trigger pin. So did lose the phone there. Um, it required a, quite a bit of force. So I used a, uh, <laughs> a screwdriver and an AR wrench to knock it out. Um, but it did come out. So as we can see, there it is. That is the knurled side. And that's on the, the bolt catch side. So go ahead and take that out, stick that on the side. And after that, the, uh, the gearbox should just come right out. So let's see here. There's this plastic piece back here that you need to pull back. So I'm just gonna expose that bit right there. Grab it with some tweezers. Pull the pin all the way out. Okay, so something I missed here is you do need to take off the bolt catch and that looks like it is actually connected. So if you can see down in there, all of that is connected, but I believe that's what was holding me up. So if I can get this flipped and out of the way, we should be able to now scoot this forward enough. I think I'm gonna have to play with the selector here. There we go. So make sure your selector is all the way in the forward position and then you can slide the gearbox right out of the lower receiver. There we go. Feels pretty light. So wonder what kind of material this is. This might be die cast aluminum. It's pretty light. And we'll take a look at this interesting bolt catch mechanism. So that's spring loaded. And then this piece goes through and it hooks on like so. So when you're removing it, you should be able to just pull it straight out. Yeah. 
There's no hook on there, so you should be able to just pull it straight out next time. And then that depresses when you press the bolt, pivoting off the gearbox and that pin, and then that'll let the faux bolt go home. So plastic piece back here, it looks like that centers it in the gearbox, which is pretty nice, honestly. Checking for play in the axles, there's a little bit of play. It's not too bad. Seems to be shimmed okay so far. There does appear to be a cutout for the anti-reverse latch. So I can actually, that's nice. So I can actually release the gearbox if it was under tension. A little bit of schmoo coming out of there. You can see the back side of the gears as well. Some wires running through. You can see that bevel gear. And you can hear. That micro switch in there. All right, so let's take this thing apart. So that screw is a little loose. Yeah, they're not super tight. So you might just want to check that if you have one of these. That one's a little better. Just check the top Phillips heads and make sure they're tightened all the way. Just barely clears. That's good. I was worried I'd have to take off the bolt catch to get to that screw. So I think that's it. Just these screws all along here. And then this one down here as well. And from what I'm told, this is a little tricky to open. So may need to pry on it a little bit. Yeah, so at this point, you'll have to remove that plastic clip to get the gearbox apart. And just make sure all these axles are pushed down so nothing springs out of the way. There we go. Push that down. And just lost some shims there. Make sure to put those back. It's a lot of shims. There we go. So this is what the inside of the gearbox looks like. Lots of grease in there. Try to loop that over. Nice, I like that. That notch in the, uh, the tappet plate actually makes reassembly a lot easier. And this bearing seems to be, what's going on there? Okay, there we go. So it looks like it's just your standard eight millimeter bearing. So that'll depress this edge right here is going to depress the, uh, the micro switch in there. And then this edge back here, in case you want to modify this trigger to shorten the pull, is going to be your take up. So let me take out the compression here. Let's take that unit out. Let's take a look at these gears really quick. There's just a lot of grease. So these do look like the EMG gears that you can buy off of the Evike website. Let's count the teeth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so this is short stroked four teeth out of the box. Um, which leads me to believe this is the 13 to 1 gear set. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and count the teeth on there. But I've seen it before. Um, this looks like the 13 to 1 gear set. Um, standard has four teeth short stroked. So we'll put that back in here. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you are going to try to upgrade this for like a full cylinder build, you are short stroked about four teeth. 
So let's take a look at the piston and cylinder head. So pull the piston out here. And there you go. Get a good look at the piston teeth. That just looks like grease. Looks like there's a little bit of contact on the second tooth. That all looks good. There's your piston head. That's what that looks like. Double O-ring. Matching inside cylinder. Let's see here. There appears to be some stuff in there. It looks like there's something in there. Not quite sure what's going on. So pulling it out, it appears this probably was from when the uh, the gun jammed up and started shattering BBs. So that probably got blown back into the cylinder. That looks like a piece of the beam. Well, we're, I'm glad I got that out of here. Um, let's see here. Looks like a half type. A little, a little further back than half type. And so I planned on replacing it with a four fifths type. For greater volume, I'm gonna be running a lo longer inner barrel and taking a look at the nozzle. There is no O-ring in there. Cylinder head looks good though. So let's go ahead and check compression now. So yeah, losing air seal. And then let's just check cylinder head. We know that it's probably coming out of the nozzle. So pretty solid compression. I mean, if you can see the indent on my finger, to give you an indication how much force I'm putting into here. Absolutely no air leak, so that's good. That's good to see. I do have a spare nozzle here, so plan on upgrading that anyway. And so I'm gonna go ahead and grab some grease, put that on and test this out. And so what I like to do is put the tappet plate on and hold it such that the nozzle is fully extended and try to, it's, it's tough to keep this all in one package. So bear with me here. Try to put my finger there, there we go. And then, uh, come on. And I lost the cylinder head. All right, uh, let's try to, yeah. All right, maybe we won't do that for now. Just try this um, as is. Yeah, that's pretty loose fit now. So with the nozzle attached, good compression. Really not leaking any air. That's good. That is pretty loose. Let's go ahead, let's try this. I'm gonna grab my spare low neck cylinder head. I'm gonna put this, make sure that's clean. This is a low neck four fifths cylinder. Let's try this. Fairly good compression, getting a little bit of a leak. I think that was just my finger placement. There we go. Yeah, that's that's solid. Yeah, that's that's super solid. Um, then there's already a cutout for the mushroom type um, cylinder head. You can kind of see that. So 
that should be good to go. Let's push that out just to give you an idea what that contact looks like. So it's almost like either SEMA, um, maybe copy Lonex, possibly. So that all looks good though. I'm digging the compression on that. Might want to add a little bit of grease, but that looks good. So I think I'm going to completely change out the cylinder just to be safe. There's just grease on everything right now. Let's test out this tap it. Let's see if we can, we can do it this time. So getting a little bit of a leak. I don't know if it's my finger placement though. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That is good. So there you go. Yeah, looks like there's a little bit of contact there. And so that's what the AOE looks like with a low neck cylinder head. So that does need to be corrected a bit. And let me put in the stock cylinder as well. Just to give you a total idea. So that's all in there, yep. So. AOE is a little bit better with the stock cylinder. And that's what it looks like. So it still needs to be shimmed a little bit. But not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, so it does sound like there are bearings inside the piston here. So there are bearings on both sides. I'm just gonna add a little bit more grease to here since we are sit changing out compression sets. There we go. That should be good. Good enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and take out the anti-reversal latch. That is, everything is just caked in goo. And I'm gonna check a couple of other things. Okay. So I'm just gonna give this a quick spin. But it's kind of hard to do because there's the, the grease is very thick. Feels okay. Um, I'm gonna check axle play now. The sector seems pretty. Sector gear seems pretty tight, and it, it might just be mine. But that sector gear has no play, and you want a little bit of play in the bearings. Wow. The spur gear is pretty tight as well. And then the bevel gear has a little bit of play. I might take a shim out because that, that feels pretty tight. Even spinning it. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and check bevel to pinion now. Um, when you're inserting, all this back together just be careful and make sure you're getting everything back where it needs to go um, you're not pinching any wires and it is the motor is actually sitting seating all the way in the bottom of the grip also that these tabs are all the way in so checking bevel to pinion now and you can see there is like there's absolutely no play um so this thing is shimmed pretty friggin tight I think that's why we're seeing wear at the bottom of the pinion. So I'm gonna make some changes here. 
So what you can't see in there is that the pinion, the motor height is a tad high. Um, I'm just gonna back it off maybe a quarter turn. So not much. And so that looks a little bit better in terms of the height. Um, still no additional play on the bevel to pinion. I don't plan on reshimming this gearbox. Uh, I'm gonna kind of run it as is, and hey, if I need to shim it later, I'll shim it. All right, so I mean that's the that's the full tear down here. Uh, so, what are my thoughts, kind of off the bat here? Um, as we saw, compression system is, is kind of hit or miss. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace, you know, 75% of the stock compression system. Um, gearbox is shimmed a little tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and remove one of the smaller shims just to loosen it up. There should be a little bit of play uh, in the bearings for that. Um, backed off the motor just a little bit to give the bevel gear some more breathing room, but it is still a bit tight. Um, I don't wanna go in and, and redo everything, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make some minor changes here. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, the component quality looks pretty decent. Uh, FPS consistency out of the box is okay. Uh, I think it's like plus or minus five at the worst. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you're gonna replace one piece, replace this nozzle here. And uh, I'm sure that'll get rid of most of the leaks. I'm going with a, you know, larger cylinder. I may need to change out, depending on depending on the inner barrel that I go with, I may need to change out the sector gear here. So I might need to reshim the box anyway. The sector gear is short stroked for teeth right off the gate. Um, so just a heads up there, if you guys were, were looking at this platform, uh, the gearbox seems to be reinforced. So that's good. We'll see how that lasts and uh, motor looks good as well. Um, has a sector delay clip to help with feeding. Absolutely no problems in the stock form feeding 26 to 28 RPS. Uh, the battery I was using wasn't fully charged, so keep that in mind. Um, on a full charge, it should do about 28 with an 11.1 LiPo. Um, Otherwise, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll catch you after I put in the additional compression parts and we'll do a, a final FPS reading um, and see where the consistency and accuracy is at. Uh, but those are just my thoughts on, on the gearbox at a glance. Quick update on what was done to the gearbox. Um, I basically took out 0.3 millimeters um, from the gear set if you're gonna stay with the stock gears pulled down the motor about a quarter turn. Um, nothing drastic, don't want to change anything too much. What, well, I wanted a, a full stroke sector gear. So I had a set of SHS 13 to one gears. So all I did was replace the sector. So if you count the teeth in there, um, all, of the, all of the teeth are there now. If you have any questions about shimming, um, then, or, you know, barrel length and cylinder volume, that sort of thing. Um, I'm gonna put some links in the description below to the Airsoft Tech videos. Um, he does a really great job of explaining it, but that's basically what I've done um, to this gearbox, is just make a couple of tweaks here and there to make it run a little bit better. And just a super ghetto mod on the trigger. So I don't have to buy a speed trigger to help take up um, just some of that take up so that when you press the trigger, it goes off faster. You don't have to pull as much. Applied that. I'm going to cut these down, but just wanted to go and show you what that looks like. One other quick oddity about the ARL is that this isn't a standard ARL spring. And I'm not quite sure if a standard ARL spring would work in this gearbox. It goes in like that. The material looks good though. Um, looks like a pretty solid ARL.
So that's the results of the modifications. Um, it's shooting a little bit slower, 24 FPS, or uh, 24 rounds per second now, shooting a little bit hotter, around 400 FPS with the full stroke. Um, the inner barrel is 363 millimeters. And quick note on reassembling the gearbox, um, what you're gonna wanna do is put the gearbox back in the shell and then add in the bolt release. Just make sure that works as well when you put that back in. Um, for the pin here, it did take a punch in order to drive that back in. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, don't forget the plastic bit on the back there. And then just make sure, again, be careful with the motor and just make sure that all is aligned. So some things, Basically, you know, what are some things that were purposely overlooked? Um, I didn't check nozzle length. It seems to be feeding just fine. Sector delay clip isn't on the new sector gear. Um, I also haven't built out a shock transfer system just yet. So, but other than that, I mean, things out of the box, like how, how are we going to get this a little bit better? Um, loosen up the gears a little bit so they're not so tight um, just check your your motor height and the compression system can use an upgrade didn't get too much better consistency for the gun after replacing the compression components but i'll continue to tinker around with it but until next time see you guys out in the field